Uh, you can't go wrong with pushing buttons. Hello, what's up? Glab Alexander here for CreativeShrimp.com and welcome to another Ask Glab episode. You ask your questions about computer graphics, art, coffee, lighting, whatever else, and I will answer them. And thank you so much for your questions. Keep it going. I'm ready for the next round of questions, but let's start the ball rolling. Raul asks, Real-time 3D animation is the future, and how Blender is going towards it? Uh, thanks, it's a great question. And uh, first of all, yes, Blender is going towards real-time, as well as the real-time applications are going towards uh, photoreal rendering, physically based shaders, physically based rendering, and so on. We offline rendering peeps are moving towards real-time stuff, towards uh, 60 frames per second, because that's our dream. We don't want to wait till it finishes rendering. And uh, the real-time folk are moving towards physically based stuff, towards uh, our offline methods of rendering, because their dream is to have a physically based shaders and all that stuff that uh, demands very heavy loads of processing power. So yes, you absolutely can expect Blender to move in that direction and I'm sure that Ton Rosendahl uh, would agree with me. The Moore's law is kind of slow these days. We no longer have such a great amount of progress in technologies and yesterday I saw the patch for Blender that upgrades Blender viewport to support PBR shaders, physically based shaders, to match the cycles viewport and it's quite natural for 3D artists to be able to fucking see what we are doing because I'm embarrassed when I don't see in the viewport the final result. I think it's kind of natural for us to see it. We all dream about real-time rendering. Get prepared. Download Blender, download Unreal Engine and learn both. Cool. Walid asks, what is the secret of telling a story with one Blender made image? That's amazing question. It's so damn deep and uh, we can write a series of books about this kind of subject. So man, if you want to tell a story in one image, uh, you'd better study the semiotics. It's the branch of linguistics that, that study signs and their meanings. Uh, because every kind of image, render, blender, it's never mind, every kind of image is a visual text. It works as a text. It has meaning, it has recipient, uh, it has cultural background in which the meaning is produced, it has myth, all that kind of stuff that are usually related to linguistics and to text. So treat your visual image as a text and know your audience, know your viewer uh, to whom you will address your message in the same kind of message uh, being interpreted by various cultural groups, social groups, works quite differently. Once again, uh, the meaning is born when someone interprets your message, not when you encode your message. That's how things work in semiotics. So study semiotics. I should say this thing, uh, the meaning, the interpretations is purely optional uh, to visual image because sometimes talking about visual is the same as dancing about architecture. You know, it's a different kind of medium. As Susan Zontag notes, it, uh, because as Susan Zontag noted, it's about erotics of art, not hermeneutics of art. Happy Jeet asks, do you fall when you set procedure, when you try to learn multiple softwares? Afijit asks, do you follow any set procedure when you try to learn multiple softwares, especially for shortcuts? 
what I do when I learn a new software. Usually I follow the combined approach. Usually I'm starting off with experimenting with pushing buttons and watching what I do. Uh, you can't go wrong with pushing buttons. And pushing buttons is not enough, obviously. And you're gonna watch the tutorials, learn the new things. Or what you usually do and when you combine these two things learning by practice and uh, learning by watching the tutorials and uh, some educational stuff like uh, introductory DVDs um, on basics on the interface all that crap that I usually watch and that you usually watch when you combine these two things that's kind of the best approach at least for me it works for me every time push the buttons and learn uh, theory at the same time sort of combined approach. Alexander asks, do you have any tips for recognizing good lighting? Can you look at an image and say it is lit well because? That's an amazing question. And uh, probably you know that I'm writing a book about lighting and personally I'm so fucking interested in, in knowing the answer for this question. You know, it's a tricky question, don't you? There are many different schools, many different approaches uh, to CG lighting and to lighting in general. Cinematic lighting and uh, lighting in photography. Just uh, imagine studio lighting when you have, uh, uh, some, when you have some uh, strong subject in your scene and you use lighting to uh, make it look appealing. Uh, that's one approach. When you have model and studio around it and you're manipulating a few light sources to give a p the appealing look to your model, you'll see the whole different approach to light. And when you look at Lomography community, Lomography is kind of a retro, a retro look in photography made using cheap Soviet cameras with the weird artifacts. For Lomography fans, the good lighting may be the lighting that is caused by a broken lens. When you detach lens slightly from the camera body and the light is leaking through the body of the camera and the film is getting burned out and you get weird light leaks and ghosting effects, that is good lighting too. That is a completely different approach to lighting in the lighting project. In my upcoming book about lighting, I treat lighting as an aesthetic experience as an unexpected interruption in the flow of the everyday, as something that you take out of the equation and the picture no longer exists. In some pictures, in some renders, lighting is the main subject. It's not just the tool to make your model look appealing. It's the driving force behind the whole render. That's what I want to say and that's a very exciting subject. I'm deeply excited about the lighting project. I can't wait to write another, another chapter. Tons of inspiration and ask your questions using AskGlab hashtag on Twitter. You ask your questions, I will answer them. Gleb Alexandrov for creativeshrimp.com <laughs> See you next time. Drink more coffee and we will change the world of computer graphics together. You and a bit of me. My face is frozen. <laughs>